Hello everyone, David here and welcome to Brick World and to the fastest junk in the universe. I was sick the last two weeks and wasn't able to upload a new model last week, but I'm finally feeling better and I think this model definitely makes up for the delay. In front of me today we have the iconic Millennium Falcon in playscale, similar to our playscale Ghost, but don't let the designation fool you into thinking this is a small model. We have over 5000 parts and this model is massive. It was designed by two bricks and is now one of my favorites, if not my favorite model that I own. Part due to the sheer size, but also because of all the attention to detail and the play features, which there are many of. If this model impresses you as much as it did myself, you can actually build it yourself using the instructions and parts list that we sell on our web store www.brickvault.toys. We built all of our models ourselves to make sure that the instructions are free of mistakes and the parts are available and cheap on the brick buying market. And if you need help ordering the pieces, we have a video tutorial on our homepage as well. Just visit brickvault.toys or click the link below in the video description and let's get back to the model. I think the Millennium Falcon doesn't need an introduction. It's one of the most iconic sci-fi ships in film history and was probably recreated the most in Lego form, next to the Republic gunship maybe. Even more impressive is it to design a model that sticks out from the rest like this one does. In my opinion it's the perfect middle ground between the UCS size that Lego put out or we have available as well and the playset from Lego. The model in front of me is a perfect mix between UCS and playset. It has all the right details and proportions, but still features all the interior details and a ton of play features and all that at a reasonable price. But let's start with the dimensions of the Millennium Falcon. To demonstrate it best, I put it on its stand that is included as well. I'm gonna show you how it connects later on in the video. I put a couple of vehicles next to it that existed during the same time frame in universe, which is interesting to see. And here is an unextended extension cord next to it for reference, because that's definitely what you need to determine the size of this beast. The first thing that jumps out to me is the level of detail on the surface and the depth of the details. We have a ton of piping and wiring and exhausts and even battle damage we created here. I love that two bricks not only used light bluish gray pieces but switched up the surface colors and included dark bluish gray, dark tan, dark red and even some small patches of sand blue, brown and gold. The tiny detail pieces all throughout the surface really is what makes this model so interesting to look at and put together. Especially all around the sides, the details really have been captured nicely. We get a plethora of different shapes and pieces all around and I really like how two bricks captured the exhaust glow in the back using a ton of trans light blue pieces. But let's jump into the features of this model. Before we open it up, we got some features on the outside that can't be overlooked. Of course we have the radar dish that can be rotated 360 degrees and up and down. Same for the quad cannon on top. We have the same cannon on the bottom of the ship as well, but I will show you that later in the video. We also have a somewhat hidden feature up front where you can lift this cargo compartment up and inside we have two spring-loaded shooters. I never expected that, but what I expected even less is this small lever here that opens this roof entrance. That's the spot where Han saves Luke from Cloud City and I really love this feature. I was super surprised when I encountered it and it's so cool that it leads into the interior as well. I just love little details like these and Tubrix is a master at that. But the coolest feature on the whole ship in my opinion is the loading ramp that can be lowered by turning this lever on the other side of the ship. So simple yet so effective. Again it's little features like this that bring mocks to life and I just love it. But that's not all. Tubrix even integrated a light brick that can be activated when you push on a small Technic pin so you can illuminate the walkway into the Falcon, which is such a neat touch and attention to detail. You just feel the dedication and passion of the designer while designing stuff like this. But let's not waste any more time and open this bad boy up. I put the Falcon back on the stand to demonstrate it. The round top part is connected with a couple of studs and it comes up together with a front and back panel. The rest of the panels just loosely rest on top but they wedge into place nicely and don't wiggle around at all which is really nice. They all have their dedicated spot where they rest. The cockpit section has room for 4 minifigs which is accurate and they all have comfy tan seats with backrest. The front two pilots get a really nicely detailed computer console in front of them and we also have the lever for going into hyperspace. I'm gonna demonstrate really quickly how it would look if all seats are occupied using my 501st clones because 
why not? There's also a walkway from the cockpit to the main area of the ship. Generally every room and walkway that should be accessible for minifix is accessible. We have working doorways and corridors everywhere on this model. And you technically don't have to use your imagination to get a minifig from A to B in the smog. The next room is again packed with details. We have a swiveling chair in front of an array of different computer looking things. We have a bed here as well that can fit a minifig because of the use of panel pieces. So there's room for the arms. You can also open up the bed for easier access. This white headpiece is supposed to represent Luke's training droid. But if you pick it up, the floor comes up as well and reveals some pipe detailing under the floor that Chewie can work on. I love this detail. We also have a small container here that you can put stuff into and I love the detailing on the wall. Here you can see the holo chest corner from a better angle. Looks cozy as hell and if we zoom out I can show you where the two gunners can sit for the top and bottom cannons. We also have a lot of printed details here as well and there's also a ladder here. Again minific access here is top notch. Moving on, we stop by the small cargo area behind the walls with yet another crate containing some gold pieces and there's also this turret here that can be pushed down to help defending the Falcon from ground troops. The next room that the corridor leads us to is the kitchen and lavatory combo. This is probably my favorite room in the Falcon. The toilet door has a lock that needs to be opened before opening the door and inside we have the toilet of course, as well as a wall of toilet paper and an air exhaust in case it gets stinky in there. And again a cool detail is the drain pipe that's connected to the back of the water reservoir. The kitchen consists of two drawers, a countertop, a stove and another air exhaust. At the back of the room we also got two additional beds that can both fit a minifig. This whole fucking interior reminds me of a dollhouse. It's just so cozy in there and interestingly enough we almost have all of the essentials of living in here. Only thing the minifigs can't do is take a shower. Moving on, now we're in the engine room. Tons of piping and wiring and all sorts of technical components and details scattered all over the room. We have a false floor for smuggling illegal goods or people and in the next room over, which is the storage area I would assume, we have loads of different types of containers. The walkway around the Falcon has 10 walls as you can see, which is accurate. And in front of the loading ramp, there are two extra small details in the floor. I'm not too sure what they're supposed to be, but you can totally use your imagination. Maybe there are two packets of spice hidden under the floor or so. And that's basically it for the interior. Now, here's a small time lapse of me putting the roof panels back on. I switched up two panels in the back on accident. That's why it's taken me a little longer back there. They're supposed to be on the opposite sides. But anyways, you can see how satisfying it is to put them back together because of how perfectly they fit in their dedicated spots. And now onto the underside. This Falcon Mog actually has retractable landing gear. I've never seen that on a Millennium Falcon Mog before. Here you can see the other quad cannon that clips into place so it doesn't interfere with the ground while placing it down. And here you can see actually my first time putting the stand on the ship which went surprisingly smooth. I could comfortably hold up the Falcon with one hand, leaning it against my body and with the other hand I was able to secure the stand to the bottom of the Falcon. It studs in in a couple of spots and the end result is stunning. It looks so good on the stand, whether you display it with all the panels on or completely open to show the interior. It has a really good angle to see everything you want to see. And yeah, that's it for the Falcon. We know not everyone has the space or money to get our big UCCS version, so this one is the perfect middle ground. I'm in love with this Falcon model and I catch myself staring at it every time I come into the studio. What a lovely piece of LEGO engineering and this can be yours as well. Just visit www.brickbot.toys for the instructions and parts list to this model. You can also download the parts list before making the purchase to check the price of the pieces on Bricklink in your region or search through your own parts collection beforehand. So visit brickvault.toys or click the link in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe for more awesome custom LEGO creations and we'll see you next time at Brickvault! Yeah.